Thaddeus and Tomorrow here, and we're going to do a little car talk. We haven't done car talk in a while, so Thaddeus is going to throw down some cool information. What are you going to talk about? Yeah, our subject you'll see in the video when you click on it, obviously. On, uh, actually, I'm not going to put that in the subject, but it's going to be about climate change <laughs> and just some, some rambling thoughts on climate change. So we're, we're driving up to our friend's retreat uh, at the Point Retreats. It's currently zero degrees. It's going to be 10 below when we get there, 26 below zero tonight. So it's going to be quite cold, but as you can see, it's nice and sunny. And we have to cut an ice hole and get full of water because I've never done this before, but I've seen it done. So this is our first year cutting the ice hole ourselves, but we need to cut the ice hole for their retreat. And then we're going to create an outdoor ice bar. And then uh, we're going to do some breath work and cold adaptation for the retreat. So when you cut an ice hole, the chain is lubricated by oil to make sure that the chain doesn't get dry and, and break. Well, when you cut ice, which is water, obviously you don't need to do that, so you drain the oil out because the water kicks up all over us. So we're going to have water as we're cutting the ice and it, and it melts, and then when we get to the water under the ice and we start cutting through the ice, water is going to kick out of that instead of the oil, and instead of the sawdust, it's going to be water at uh, 10 I degrees. I think about that. At 10 degrees below zero. So, oh my god, I'm uh, not standing next to you. you I brought <laughs> lots of extra clothes because I'm going to be the one getting soaking wet at 10 below. But uh, I'll one be of the, the one filming him. <laughs> one of the things that we learned yesterday, no, last weekend at our at our own retreat, is that when it's below zero outside, it's the best time to cold plunge. Yeah. Because the water is actually warmer than the air. So at 10 below zero, that means the water is 42 degrees warmer than air. Because even though ice, you know, maybe ice gets down to zero, but water can't get below 32 without freezing. So the water will never be below 32 degrees. And you can't get frostbite in the water? Not at 32. Yeah. You can't get frostbite at 32 degrees. So when the, you get out of the water and you're wet, you can. Right. So the first day we cold plunged and it was negative six degrees and they got up to like maybe maybe negative one and it was way easier to get in the water at 32 degrees than the day after that which it was what 20 degrees? it got up it was like 17 yeah we se it was like 17, around 20, 20 degrees i found it and you know i didn't even think about it the second day but it was a lot easier the first day so anyway so cool. so one of the things we were just going to to talk about so that was interesting and it pops up at work for me once in a while as well. And I used to be the expert at the company for this, this climate change. How did we get on that topic to begin with? Because I was like, ooh, we should make a car talk. We were talking about the movie Don't Look Up. Oh, yeah. And so if you haven't seen it, it's about an asteroid that's going to hit the Earth and destroy the whole Earth. And Daddy saw it. I chose not to watch it. Because it was good. Yeah. I, would, I would recommend it, actually. And Leonardo DiCaprio is in it, and he actually plays a really good role. He's a very convincing actor, and I liked him in that movie. He like played a professor, and it did not look like him. He was kind of fat. And, but wasn't uh, the movie like I thought it was supposed to be based on like an alien invasion? No, it's based on an asteroid hitting the Earth and oh, it's going to destroy it. Oh, okay. And nobody will believe them that it's going to happen. So uh, Matt from Quantum of Conscience, we are just listening to his video and then we start talking about it the movie yeah because they're saying that that's going to be used as an allegory for climate change where they're going to say there's all this climate change and nobody will believe it's happening and then it's going to be too late and it'll destroy the earth so uh, that's the allegory and that's why we thought about climate change because number one climate is defined as changing temperatures over time that is climate so that means it's always changing. Wait, say that again. Say, say that definition again. Well, they can rewind it. No, but just say it it's slower. Changing temperature over time. So changing temperature over time. Right. We're all concerned when we talk about climate change about increasing temperature. Well, the temperature always changes, and that's how climate is actually defined. It is changing temperature over time. So by definition, the climate changes always, and it's never the same forever. As you can see in the entire history of the Earth, if you believe in the history that's presented to you, then, quote-unquote, before man, the climate changed all the time. There were ice ages, there were 
uh, tropical zones, there were pole shifts, there were all sorts of things that happened due to climate change without any intervention by man, should you believe that history, which I do not believe that history in any way, shape, or form. Just want to put that out there. So why is it a big deal now? Like, why are people, because we, they think that we are the impetus They of think man, by releasing carbon, carbon, so carbon is defined as a quote-unquote greenhouse gas, Greenhouse gases are gases that when they are in the atmosphere, they can cause the Earth's temperature to rise by being a trap for heat. So carbon supposedly can trap heat. Well, honestly, carbon really can't trap that much heat, regardless of what calculations they're showing you. There are models that show the Earth heating up two degrees and what will happen if that were to occur. Nobody can model the real world because there's too many variables. So they created a computer model and they said, if the Earth heats up this far, there will be you know, all these things that happen due to climate change. The sea levels will rise, which is impossible. We can talk about why. Uh, there will be more tornadoes and more hurricanes. And they're trying to blame that on climate change or what they used to call global warming, which was the heating of the Earth due to greenhouse gases. They've gone away from that term probably because the scientists have debunked that and started talking just about climate change, which the climate always changes. What was it called before? Global warming. Global warming, right. Oh yeah, they changed it to climate change. Because of harp and weather modification. Oh. We, you can listen to the Navy talk about controlling the weather and they claim by 2025 they will have full and total control of all weather. And they already had some control of the weather when they were making that presentation. So if, when I sent you? There's a bunch out there. Oh, okay. If there's weather modification, and then there's people saying that climate change will cause these weather events, and that's what you're worried about, but yet our military controls the weather, well, then how can you believe anything about what they're saying? Now, number two, if the climate has always changed, is man contributing to the climate change? Really, that's the question I think people need to answer for themselves. Did you say contributing? If, <laughs> so if, if burning fossil fuels contributes to, and I don't believe that they're fossil fuels, that's a misnomer, that would mean that they're made of fossils of dead dinosaurs. So I've never believed that, starting in 2001. And I think it's becoming more known, like, uh, the oil would have run out 50 years ago if it was a non-renewable resource from dinosaurs. We use more oil every single day and then Brazil uses now more, and then China uses more, and these places never used oil before, like we do, but now they're all up to our standards and using more oil every day, and there's never been a well that's run dry. And supposedly the wells that have run dry, you come back 10 years later and there's oil again. Something's not adding up. So, then if we burn these Seems oils... like all these fairy tales have loose beginnings, doesn't it? They have scientific beginnings that if you look closely at them fall apart. Yes. And you're all just taught to believe it because it's in your textbooks and you're taught not to question it. So you should question, and I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm saying that I question, and I had this belief in 2001 that oil did not come from dinosaurs because that would be just impossible, the amount of fauna that would have had to be on the planet and be crushed into this oil, and then we use billions of barrels a day of it nonstop forever. And it just keeps going. And there's still more, and more, and more. So it's plants and animal so bones? Is, I mean, is that what makes up the fossil of the fuel? I, not according to me. I know, but like... I don't know. What about, what, well, what about like plant eating plant-based foods? <laughs> Using... What about? Well, I'm just saying like if, that, if all those things are fossil fuels, Okay, well, you can, if you can describe, I just wasn't sure what you're trying to say for that. So, what, what were you saying? Okay, <laughs> describe one more time what you're saying about the fossil fuels and vegans. Okay, or I, was, veganism, sorry. I was just saying, like, it's okay for people to put the fossil fuels and put the animals, like, in your car to go someplace, but they get all crazy, or people get crazy when you're, like, eating meat. And oh, so, so if you believe that fossil fuels are dead dinosaurs... Right. And you're a vegan and you don't use animal products. So let me just get this straight. Yeah. You don't use animal products. And I'm not calling out vegans. I'm just... And me either. Like, like, I don't care. <laughs> I might, like, eat... I used to eat vegan. And I yeah. used to be a vegan. But um, if you don't use...
use wool because it comes from an animal. You won't eat honey because it comes from an animal. And you don't use leather because it comes from an animal. Can but you something? Sorry. Anything that comes from an animal. And if wow. and you instead use plastic. So like your shoes, I've seen vegan shoes and vegan furniture. They're made of plastics. They're made of dead animals. They're made yeah, of dead that's dinosaurs. What, that's what I'm trying to say. Like they're it's okay and it's okay to like put the fuel in your car. So the fuel that you're using so to transport drive, yourself and, and then, to heat your and house. Then, and then you're you know creating the emissions that contribute to climate and change. Then, like <laughs> and the fuel you're using to heat your house is from a dead animal. Seems like a lot of people should be walking. So that's why I think we need to. That is why I think we need to say that fossil fuels are neither fossil nor from dead animals. Because right. the vegans can keep using. Why don't we find out like what it is? What we can. It's nobody knows, right? It was in the movie. Um, Jurassic Park. <laughs> no, the China Big Trouble in Little China. What Big Trouble it? in Little China defined what it is. They said it. They said that oil coming out of the earth is the black blood of the earth. So it's the blood of the earth, which is potentially why it's renewable. It continues to be produced, and we've never run out, ever. Right. After people have said since the 60s we were going to run out, maybe since the 20s, that we'd run out within a, a few and, and if you think about that, like, if the earth is this living entity, this living being, well, it is, it's Gaia, Mama Gaia, it's like the blood, and we pump it out like a, like our blood would be pumped out. It's so crazy, and like, Is it changing in some way to put out less heat or more heat? 
and instead we're looking at just a little bit of activity we do here on Earth. So, I've seen a lot of scientific studies, of course they're not, they are published, they are by scientists within the U.S., and they question climate change, so for people to say the science is settled are lying, because the science is never settled on anything, that's why everything should be questioned, and that's how scientific advancements occur, by questioning accepted quote-unquote science, and then coming up with new theories that are helpful. So, I would say, when it comes to climate change, yes, the climate is changing. Beware of what you're being convinced of the sources. And why do we, we talk about this too? Because Amazon was coming up with labels for their products, certifications to be climate friendly. And those products that are certified seem to be selling faster than others. Faster? Because you said when you went to order the climate certified product, for Brazil nuts, you wanted to order Brazil nuts, and that if you if you want to use the Amazon climate friendly Brazil nut, they were back ordered till March. Like two months. So I was assuming like people are buying those, and if you get the non climate certified uh, Brazil nuts, you can have them tomorrow. Because probably people are seeing the labels, and it's like is this uh, climate certi certification or certified. You might want to look into what that actually means before you just buy the label of climate certified because it may not actually mean anything and it might be less friendly than the non-certified product which we often find that someone just didn't want to pay for or make up something to put a label on but people are buying because they want to do something good for the planet which is great like i'm all for people doing the right thing and i think you need to be very careful with those marketing terms that are being thrown out now on amazon they have all these certifications they're now using, be very careful that they are at all meaningful. And do your due diligence into the company itself and whether the company itself is, in fact, doing good, selling healthful product, treating their 